the Bernese mountain dog, affectionately called the Berner, and known as the Berner Seninhund in his Swiss homeland, is instantly recognizable with his flashy tricolor coat and white Swiss cross on his chest. Underneath that beautiful coat is a sturdy dog well suited for heavy work. These beautiful Gentle dogs have been traditionally used in Switzerland as herders and draft dogs. The burner was originally a vital part of farm life, serving to drive cattle, protect his family, and pull carts loaded with goods to sell at nearby villages. Although he's a good-mannered, hard worker, he nearly became extinct in the early 20th century when other means of transportation became accessible to farmers. Fortunately, a handful of fanciers sought to preserve the breed, in addition to being strikingly good-looking. The burner has a wonderful temperament. He is known for being loyal, affectionate, eager to please, and intelligent. He's easy to train, if you allow him time to analyze what you want him to do. Most of all, he has a happy-go-lucky attitude about life. The burner is calm but gregarious, and sometimes even a little goofy when he plays with his family. He does well with children of all ages and with adults, but he isn't a good choice for people who live in apartments or don't have a large, fenced yard for him to play in. The burner needs to live with his family, rather than be relegated to an outdoor kennel. He's happiest when he can participate in all family activities, since he was bred to be a working dog. The burner likes to learn and can be easily trained, since he is very large, about 100 pounds. When mature, early obedience training and socialization are recommended. Prospective owners should know that the burner is slow to mature, both physically and mentally. He may remain puppyish for some time. Additionally, the burner is known to have a soft personality. His feelings are easily hurt and he doesn't respond well to harsh corrections. Despite his beauty and excellent temperament, or perhaps because of these qualities, burners are struggling to survive today. The breed has a small gene pool which has resulted in numerous health problems related to inbreeding. As more people find out about the breed, many dogs with health problems are being bred with little or no regard to the effect this has on the breed as a whole. Those considering a Bernese Mountain Dog must be very careful to buy a puppy only from a reputable breeder. Highlights Burners have numerous health problems due to their small genetic foundation and perhaps due to other reasons yet undiscovered. Currently, the lifespan of a Bernese Mountain Dog is comparatively short, about six to eight years, because of the burner's popularity. Some people have bred dogs of lesser quality in order to sell the puppies to unsuspecting buyers. Be especially careful about importing dogs from foreign countries that have few laws governing kennel conditions. Often these dogs are bought at auction and little is known about their health history. Veterinary care can be costly because of the health problems in the breed. Burners shed profusely, especially in the spring and fall, if shedding drives you crazy. This may not be the right breed for you. The burner likes to be with his family. He's likely to develop annoying behavior problems, such as barking, digging, or chewing. If he's isolated from people in their activities, when burners are mature, they are large dogs who like to have a job to do, for those reasons. It's wise, and fun, to begin obedience training early. Although they're very gentle with children, burners sometimes accidentally knock over a small child or toddler, to get a healthy dog. Never buy a puppy from an irresponsible breeder, puppy mill, or pet store. Look for a reputable breeder who tests her breeding dogs to make sure they're free of genetic diseases that they might pass on to the puppies, and that they have sound temperaments. History 1 Ancient breed, the Milosa, stands out as of the most versatile, well-traveled, and influential in the development of a variety of Mastiff-type dogs, including Berners. It's thought that the four Swiss Seninhund breeds, Appenzeller Seninhund, Entelbuka Seninhund, Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, and Berner Seninhund, developed as crosses between farm dogs from the Swiss Alps and the Molossa and Mastiff-type dogs that the Romans brought with them when they invaded the Alps in the 1st century BC. 
It's likely that the burner has been working on Swiss farms for more than 2,000 years, quietly tucked away on small holdings in the Alps, where he's been pulling carts, accompanying livestock, standing watch, and providing his owners with loyal companionship. It is known that by 1888, only 36% of the Swiss population worked in agriculture and need dwindled for a strong dog who could herd of cattle and pull a cart filled with goods in 1899. However, the Swiss became interested in preserving their native breeds and founded a dog club called Berner. Members included breeders of a variety of purebred dogs. In 1902, the Swiss Dog Club sponsored a show at Ostam and Dijon that drew attention to the Swiss mountain breeds. Two years later, the breeds took a big step forward through several events. At an international dog show held in Bern, the Swiss Dog Club sponsored a class for Swiss Shepherd Dogs, which included the mountain dogs. This was also the first year that these dogs were referred to as Bernese, and in that same year, the Swiss Kennel Club recognized the Bernese mountain dog as a breed. During World War I, dog shows and breeding took a backseat to war efforts, but after the war, the first Bernese mountain dogs were exported first to Holland and then to the United States, although the breed was not yet recognized by the American Kennel Club. In 1936, two British breeders began importing Berners, and the first litter of Berner pups was born in England. Also in 1936, the Glen Shadow Kennel in Louisiana imported a female and a male Berner from Switzerland. By early 1937, the AKC sent Glen Shadow a letter saying that the Bernese Mountain Dog had been accepted as a new breed in the working class. World War II again interrupted the progress of the breed outside its native land, but after 1945, importation and registration resumed in the United States. In 1968, the Bernese Mountain Dog Club of America was founded, with 62 members and 43 registered Berners. Three years later, there were more than 100 members in the club. Meanwhile, the breed, which had died out in England during World War II, was reintroduced in Great Britain. The Bernese Mountain Dog Club of America became a member club of the AKC in 1981. In 1990, the AKC adopted its current Barney's Mountain Dog standard. Size males stand 25 to 27.5 inches tall and weigh 80 to 115 pounds. Females stand 23 to 26 inches tall and weigh 70 to 95 pounds. Personality The burner is an affectionate, intelligent, and alert dog. He's also gentle, calm, and tolerant. He likes to be with his family and thrives when he's included in family activities. His large size is one of his most notable features, and of course early training is essential to teach him how to behave properly in the house and with people, slow to mature. He reaches his adult size long before he reaches mental maturity. The burner is protective of his family, though he isn't usually aggressive. He can be aloof with strangers and generally a bit shy. So exposing the burner puppy to a wide variety of people, animals, and situations is important. Temperament is affected by a number of factors, including heredity, training, and socialization. Puppies with nice temperaments are curious and playful, willing to approach people and be held by them. Choose the middle-of-the-road puppy. Not the one who's beating up his littermates or the one who's hiding in the corner. Always meet at least one of the parents. Usually the mother is the one who's available to ensure that they have nice temperaments that you're comfortable with. Meeting siblings or other relatives of the parents is also helpful for evaluating what a puppy will be like when he grows up. Like every dog, the burner needs early socialization, exposure to many different people, sights, sounds, and experiences. When the young, socialization helps ensure that your burner puppy grows up to be a well-rounded dog. Enrolling him in a puppy kindergarten class is a great start. Inviting visitors over regularly 
and taking him to busy parks, stores that allow dogs, and on leisurely strolls to meet neighbors will also help him polish his social skills. Health burners are generally healthy, but like all breeds, they're prone to certain health conditions. Not all burners will get any or all of these diseases, but it's important to be aware of them if you're considering this breed. If you're buying a puppy, find a good breeder who will show you health clearances for both your puppy's parents. Health clearances prove that a dog has been tested for and cleared of a particular condition. In burners, you should expect to see health clearances from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals OFA, for hip dysplasia, with a score of fair or better, elbow dysplasia, hypothyroidism, and von Willebrandt's disease, from Auburn University for Thrombopathia, and from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation, SURF, certifying that eyes are normal. You can confirm health clearances by checking the OFA website, offer.org. Cancer Various forms of cancer afflict a large number of Barney's Mountain Dogs and can cause early death. Symptoms include abnormal swelling of a sore or bump, sores that don't heal, bleeding from any body opening, and difficulty with breathing or elimination. Treatments for cancer include chemotherapy surgery, and medications, hip dysplasia, this is an inherited condition in which the thigh bone doesn't fit snugly into the hip joint, some dogs show pain and lameness on one or both rear legs, but others don't display outward signs of discomfort, x-ray screening is the most certain way to diagnose the problem, either way, arthritis can develop as the dog ages, Dogs with hip dysplasia should not be bred, so if you're buying a puppy, ask the breeder for proof that the parents have been tested for hip dysplasia and are free of problems. Elbow dysplasia Similar to hip dysplasia, this is also a degenerative disease common to large breed dogs. It's believed to be caused by abnormal growth and development which results in a malformed and weakened joint. The disease varies in severity. The dog could simply develop arthritis, or he could become lame. The treatment includes surgery, weight management, medical management, and anti-inflammatory medication. Progressive retinal atrophy, PRA. This is a family of eye diseases that involves the gradual deterioration of the retina early in the disease. Affected dogs become night blind, they lose sight during the day as the disease progresses. Many affected dogs adapt well to the limited or lost vision. As long as their surroundings remain the same, portosystemic shunt, PSS, this is a congenital abnormality in which blood vessels allow blood to bypass the liver, as a result. The blood is not cleansed by the liver as it should be. Symptoms, which usually appear before two years of age, can include but are not limited to neurobehavioral abnormalities, lack of appetite, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, intermittent gastrointestinal issues, urinary tract problems, drug intolerance, and stunted growth. Surgery is usually the best option. Von Willebrandt's disease Found in both dogs and humans, this is a blood disorder that affects the clotting process. An affected dog will have symptoms such as nosebleed, bleeding gums, prolonged bleeding from surgery, prolonged bleeding during heat cycles or after whelping, and occasionally blood in the stool. This disorder is usually diagnosed between 3 and 5 years of age, and it can't be cured, however. It can be managed with treatments that include cauterizing or suturing injuries, transfusions before surgery, and avoidance of specific medications. Panishtitis, commonly called pano. This condition causes self-limiting lameness. At about 5 to 12 months of age, the dog may start to limp first on one leg, then on another, then the limping will stop. There are usually no long-term effects. Rest and restricted activity may be necessary for a while if the dog is in pain. The best thing that you can do for your burner is to feed him a high-quality dog food that doesn't have too much calcium at a higher percentage of protein, which some believe may cause pano. Ask your vet for his recommendations. Gastric torsion, also called bloat. This is a life-threatening condition that can affect large, deep-chested dogs such as Bernese Mountain Dogs. 
This is especially true if they are fed one large meal a day, eat rapidly, drink large volumes of water after eating, and exercise vigorously after eating. Bloat is more common among older dogs. It occurs when the stomach is distended with gas or air and then twists. Torsion. The dog is unable to belch or vomit to rid himself of the excess air in the stomach and the normal return of blood to the heart is impeded. Blood pressure drops and the dog goes into shock. Without immediate medical attention, the dog can die. Suspect bloat if your dog has a distended abdomen and is salivating excessively and retching without throwing up. He also may be restless, depressed, lethargic, and weak, with a rapid heart rate. It's important to get your dog to the vet as soon as possible if you see these signs. Care burners are not suited to apartment or condo life. A home with a large, securely fenced yard is the best choice because the burner is a working dog. He has plenty of energy. In addition to yard play, he needs a minimum of 30 minutes of vigorous exercise every day. Three times that I mount keeps this sturdy dog in top condition. With his thick, handsome coat, the burner is a natural fit for cold climates. He loves to play in the snow. Conversely, with his black coat and large size, he's prone to heat stroke. Don't allow him to exercise strenuously when it's extremely hot. Limit exercise to early mornings or evenings when it's cooler. Keep him cool during the heat of the day, either inside with fans or air conditioning or outside in the shade. You'll need to take special care if you're raising a burner puppy. Like many large breed dogs, burners grow rapidly between the ages of 4 and 7 months, making them susceptible to bone disorders and injury. They do well on a high quality low calorie diet that keeps them from growing too fast additionally don't let the burner puppy run and play on hard surfaces such as pavement jump excessively or pull heavy loads until he's at least two years old and his joints are fully formed normal play on grass is fine and so are puppy agility classes with their one inch jumps Feeding recommended daily amount, 3 to 5 cups of high quality dry food a day, divided into 2 meals. Note, how much your adult dog eats depends on his size, age build, metabolism, and activity level. Dogs are individuals, just like people, and they don't all need the same amount of food. It almost goes without saying that a highly active dog will need more than a couch potato dog. The quality of dog food you buy also makes a difference. The better the dog food, the further it will go toward nourishing your dog and the less of it you'll need to shake into your dog's bowl. Keep your burner in good shape by measuring his food and feeding him twice a day rather than leaving food out all the time. If you're unsure whether he's overweight, Give him the eye test and the hands-on test. First, look down at him. You should be able to see a waist. Then place your hands on his back thumbs along the spine, with the fingers spread downward. You should be able to feel but not see his ribs without having to press hard. If you can't, he needs less food and more exercise. Burner puppies need slow, steady growth. Choose a good quality food that's 22 to 24 percent protein and 12 to 15 percent fat. For more on feeding your burner, see our guidelines for buying the right food, feeding your puppy, and feeding your adult dog. Coat color and grooming the burner coat is gorgeous. A thick double coat with a longer outer coat and a woolly undercoat, characteristically tricolored. The majority of the burner's body is covered with jet black hair with rich rust and bright white. There's usually a white marking on his chest that looks like an inverted cross. A white blaze between the eyes, and white on the tip of his tail. Beauty has a price, though, and in this case is that the burner is a shedder. He sheds moderately all year and heavily in the spring and fall. Brushing several times a week helps reduce the amount of hair around the house and keeps the coat clean and tangle-free. Periodic bathing, every three months or so, will maintain his neat appearance. Brush your burner's teeth at least two or three times a week to remove tartar buildup and the bacteria that lurk inside it. 
Daily brushing is even better if you want to prevent gum disease and bad breath. Trim nails once a month if your dog doesn't wear them down naturally to prevent painful tears and other problems. If you can hear them clicking on the floor, they're too long. Dog toenails have blood vessels in them. And if you cut too far you can cause bleeding, and your dog may not cooperate the next time he sees the nail clippers come out, so, if you're not experienced trimming dog nails, ask a vet a groomer for pointers, his ears should be checked weekly for redness or a bad odor, which can indicate an infection, when you check your dog's ears. Wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with gentle, pH-balanced ear cleaner to help prevent infections. Don't insert anything into the ear canal, just clean the outer ear. Begin accustoming your burner to being brushed and examined when he's a puppy. Handle his paws frequently, dogs are touchy about their feet, and look inside his mouth. Make grooming a positive experience filled with praise and rewards, and you'll lay the groundwork for easy veterinary exams and other handling when he's an adult. As you groom, check for sores, rashes, or signs of infection, such as redness, tenderness, or inflammation on the skin, in the nose, mouth, and eyes, and on the feet. Eyes should be clear, with no redness or discharge. Your careful weekly exam will help you spot potential health problems early. Children and other pets The burner is an excellent family pet. And he's usually gentle and affectionate with children who are kind and careful with animals. Being so large, he can inadvertently bump or knock over very young or small children, as with every breed. You should always teach children how to approach and touch dogs and always supervise any interactions between dogs and young children to prevent any biting or ear or tail pulling on the part of either party. Teach your child never to approach any dog while he's eating or sleeping or to try to take the dog's food away. No dog, no matter how friendly, should ever be left unsupervised with a child. The burner gets along with other pets well, though the greater the size difference, the more supervision and training required to keep everyone safe. Rescue groups burners are often purchased without any clear understanding of what goes into owning one. There are many burners in need of adoption and or fostering. There are a number of rescues that we have not listed, if you don't see a rescue listed for your area. Contact the National Breed Club or a local breed club and they can point you toward a burner's rescue.